Miracle of the Bells. Upon its initial release, critics slammed the film for being a subpar storyline and a lot of miscasting, such as Frank Sinatra's role as Father Paul, who isn't the only singer that's ever tried to play a priest. However, with the passing of time, I really believe that this film has taken on a similar, similar structure to storylines like It's a Wonderful Life, where at first they were slammed by people, but later on have developed a certain place in cinematic history that's rightfully theirs. And to that extent, I believe this film deserves a place on our countdown. The story follows press agent Bill Dunnigan, played by Fred McMurray, who probably is best known for his work on My Three Sons, but throughout the course of his career has worked alongside actors we've already covered in The Hysteria, like Sidney the Fat Man Green Street, as well as other Hollywood legends like Bob Hope, Humphrey Bogart, and Katherine Hepburn. Surprisingly enough, McMurray was born right here in Kankakee, Illinois, where our site is from. Sorry to get off track, but I think that's pretty cool. Back to the story. Dunnigan is arriving from Hollywood into fictional Coal Town, Pennsylvania, for one reason. To lay to rest his former girlfriend-slash-actress, Olga Treskovna, who had just finished living her dream of becoming a leading movie star in a new movie called Joan of Arc, but then suddenly died right after filming the movie, and whose dying request it was to be returned to her hometown and buried next to her parents. As Bill rides into town, you get the feeling right away that a good majority of the people in Coal Town are swindlers, as the funeral director literally stops his car right after he finds out Olga's true name and demands that he be paid in full on on the spot for her father's funeral that had never been fully paid for. Why are you stopping? It's four years since I buried her drunken pa for nothing. And I ain't burying any more dead beats until they pay up. You mean right now? I've waited four years. In fact, it's right here where critics of the first screening of the film probably got tripped up, as it was one of the first films to use flashback sequences to such an extent to develop a story so early and so often that it's mind-boggling in view of the audience, as the story and the history of the characters is consistently evolving, then backtracking, then progressing over and over again. It's here early on in the movie where we get a flashback sequence of Bill and Olga at a diner in Iowa on Christmas Eve. Although the scene only lasts about 12 minutes, it's this scene alone that's really embedded the undertone theme as a Christmas film for this story. And aside from the flashbacks, we're in different areas of the U.S. all the time. We start out in present-day Pennsylvania, then it's a flashback to New York, then back to Pennsylvania, then off to Iowa, then back to Pennsylvania, then back to California. For a moviegoer in the 40s, this was a lot to keep track of. As the story fades into the present once again, Bill finally wises up and realizes that the funeral director is an idiot because he didn't plan the funeral at St. Michael's, which Olga requested, and leaves the funeral director to go find St. Michael's Church that the funeral director insists is a no good worth a shack of a church. You'll be back. And it's there where he meets Father Frank, or... Pastor Paul, who calms Dunnigan first from the ways of some of the other people in town, and then calls the funeral director to give him a piece of his mind. You're a greedy and stupid man, Mr. Orloff. Pastor Paul is a tough dude, and he gets the body of Olga to be brought to the church, and Dunnigan is left to relax and grieve for his lost love, beginning by filling Pastor Paul in on the details of Olga's life as he fills in the audience as well, and we find out that the studio, which is afraid to make an unheard of dead girl the star of their big box office film, sadly isn't going to release the movie, leaving Dunnigan heartbroken that Olga has given her life for something that will now never see the light of day. The next day, Pastor Paul and Dunnigan take a stroll through the cemetery where Olga will be laid to rest that overlooks the soot-lined coal town that lies below. It's this scene in particular that has, in my mind, given the movie a bad rap with the audience at the time and almost has the phrase, Coal Town Stinks, scrolling across the bottom of the movie. And keep in mind, coal towns in America at the time was a humongous industry, so it offended a lot of people. I think the scene is meant to say something much more to those who can see outside the box. It's here where Dunnigan gets the inspiration for a brainstorm to save Olga's work, starting by passing bad checks around to the keepers of the church in town to get them to ring their bells for three days and three nights. In the original book, which the movie is based off of, it was originally four days and four nights, but I guess the movie producers figured that one day isn't really that important to the storyline. So news travels of the unheard of actions of the community, and thus a news bulletin fills the air around the world for the next couple of days as the bells in Pennsylvania ring on and on and on. But not everybody's happy about the bells ringing. Coal miner management says it's bad for the miner's psyche. Other churches are mad about it, and the film producer of Olga's movie in Hollywood gets a little upset at Dugan's stunts. 
It goes on for days. And some other amazing events as well. Overall, I think it's a good film. As stated earlier, some critics have understandably called this film nauseating because of the constant flashbacks. But I think that's one of the more unique properties of this film. That really keeps your mind active. And you're not just sitting there numb watching another typical storyline unfold. If you decide you want to give this film a chance, I think you'll be rather content with it. Five churches, five bells. This is pretty big.